right so a bit more B7 and uh, this is about linear and closed loop systems and uh, the key word I suppose for all of this is sustainable and sustainable means um, that you can continue to use something over a long period of time so it might be um, food stocks might be fish stocks for example we'll come back to those it might be crops, it might be something like timber. So something you can continue to use over a long period. Now, everything is sustainable on a long enough time period. Um, let me try and give you an example of that. People sometimes talk about worrying about the earth is in danger or the earth's going to die and you know, carbon, um, too much carbon dioxide and things in the atmosphere. The earth is going to be fine. What they really mean, what they're talking about, is humans. Okay? Um, the earth will exist a long time after we've gone. Humans, however, not been around that long um, and we probably won't be around that much longer to be honest so that's really what we're talking about when we talk about sustainable over a period of human usable human lifespan now a lot of human uh, human ecosystems when we interact have what we call a linear model and linear just means a line Oops. Um, and they talk in the book about a, a take make and dump society so here's a simple example we take oil out of the ground, we use it to make things like plastics and then when this is run out it gets dumped, thrown in the bin, thrown in landfill and you know, it's going to take millions of years for the, the atoms, the molecules in this plastic to eventually break down. So on a very long time scale, yeah this will recycle but effectively wouldn't ever say that's recycling, it's, it's been dumped. You know, Humans will be, I'll certainly be long gone by the time this pen is broken down. So we need to be a bit more concerned perhaps about some of the things that um, we're using up. So this might include things like fossil fuel, which is coal, oil, and gas. Again, on a very, very long time scale, we probably will get coal and oil and gas reforming, but you're looking at tens of hundreds of millions of years. Um, that's certainly not on a human lifespan. Okay. So fossil fuels, um, we really need to cut down how much we use them because we will run out. Um, let's use a different colour. Some of the natural resources that we have around so things perhaps like um, timber wood um, clean air you might not think of air as being a resource but if you live somewhere with a lot of pollution um, some of the big uh, Chinese cities now like Beijing a lot of air pollution a lot of particulate smoke and things in the air um, and it makes it unpleasant and also makes it unlivable uh, fresh water certain places are now starting to run out of fresh water um, there's a lot of pressure on from increased population uh, it's a big deal. If you don't have water for more than you know, three, three, four days, um, you can die. And fresh water, of course, is, is the important thing because if it's contaminated in any way, um, you can get disease and death, all sorts of horrible things. Fertile soil. Fertile meaning that you can actually grow something in it. Fertile soil needs um, dead or organic matter, things like dead leaves and stuff. Um, if there's nothing in there, then the soil is just basically rock and you can't grow anything so that's an important thing it's getting washed away in a lot of places with deforestation taking trees out and things so that's something and fish stocks famous one um, in the UK at the moment is cod although the cod is starting to replenish itself with so much fishing of cod done that, that the uh, levels of cod really dropped off okay in terms of this make uh, take make a dump society making things requires energy and a lot of the energy that we get comes from yeah, our old friend fossil fuels, burning coal, power stations, burning gas. So the simple fact of making things requires energy and we're using up more of this stuff. So it's, you know, it's a kind of a feedback, isn't it? Um, not only are we taking fossil fuels out of the ground in order to make things, we're also using fossil fuels. Um, the problem, the dump, you know, when we get rid of this stuff, waste materials depending on what it was it can harm humans and it can harm other wildlife plants animals uh, to give you an example of that batteries you may know that you're not meant to, to throw batteries away in the bin you're meant to dispose of them because things like mercury can get into the ground um, and become toxic and poisonous um, some waste is actually things that really we could do with um, keeping hold of so to give you an example i've got something here that i'll have to do um, there's my tablet okay and this thing contains certain metals which are actually quite expensive and mobile phones and things do the same thing things like gold and it's actually now becoming viable to instead of throwing phones away um, 
they all get sent to somewhere and they get broken apart and they take the metals out only small bits but because there's so little of this stuff it becomes worthwhile to take them out of phones take out things like the gold uh, platinum is another good example platinum is used in catalytic converters in cars this is um, part of your exhaust it helps absorb sulfur compounds platinum is a very expensive metal okay it makes catalytic converters i don't know if i put catalytic cars there catalytic converters um, they're quite expensive there's now so much of this platinum dust lying around on roads it's almost worthwhile to go across the roads hoovering this stuff up and extracting the platinum because platinum is so expensive and there's so much of it on the road now don't go out don't go rushing out the door now scraping up gravel because there's not enough there but it, it's getting to the point where commercially we can kind of do that so linear systems um, not particularly good for the environment We'll come back uh, and do another video on, I think, closed loop ecosystems. Um, we'll see what the comparison is.